Hello boys and girls, it's me, Danny. Alrighty, so one of my viewers suggested that I make a video in which I discuss about how to cut flower spikes on different types of orchids. As you might know, if you cut the flower spike on a Phalaenopsis orchid in a certain way, it can give you some secondary spikes. But with other orchids, it's not really the case. So I'm gonna take a few orchids, the most common orchids you can find, and then quite a few species, and uh, I will tell you which ones need to uh, be cut to the base and which ones can actually produce multiple flowers if you leave the flower spike be. Okay, so I will take different species of orchids, but I will leave Phalaenopsis for last because it's quite an extended discussion there. Alrighty, so I would like to start off by saying that cutting the flower spike on your orchid in the vast majority of cases will not affect the health of your orchid. So your orchid will not die, it will not be upset, it will not go all mental if you cut its flower spike. It's quite the opposite. Because flowers drain quite a lot of energy from an orchid, uh, energy which can be put to better use in foliage production, suitable production, and root production. So in any case, if you have a sick orchid, the best thing to do is to get rid of the flower spike. It will not die on you because you cut the flower spike. So hopefully now you're more relieved when it comes to cutting flower spikes. It does not affect the health of the orchid. Now to cut a flower spike, you will need a sharp scissors, whatever scissors you have will do. You need to sterilize it with alcohol as best as you can or with some bleach, it depends. Just sterilize it so you don't transfer disease and um, other stuff to orchids if you cut multiple spikes. So all you need is this thing for your usual flower spikes. If you have a thick flower spike, you can use a pruner as well, but in the vast majority of cases, you will not need it. Okay, so let's start with the Dendrobium kingianum orchid and his hybrids. This is the Bariota, but it's quite similar to the kingianum. Now, when your flower spikes are dried up, they don't have any more flowers, you are safe to cut the flower spike close to the base because this flower spike will not continue to bloom from the tip, nor will it produce any side shoots. So when your flower spike is dried like this, just give it a good cut and I will try to give you an example with my left hand. There you go, this is all you have to do, as close to the base as possible without damaging the leaves, simply for aesthetic reasons really. And also because you don't want to get tangled with your clothes in the flower spike and actually bump the orchid. So this is a good cut for this type of dendrobium. Dendrobium phalaenopsis orchids are pretty much the same. They will not branch off, they will not produce any more flowers from the tip of the flower spike. So when everything is done, all the flowers have dropped, you are safe to cut the flower spike as close to the base as possible, just like with the kingianum orchid. Dendrobium nobili orchids, however, do not produce a flower spike, not like the other dendrobiums you just saw. They will produce a very, very tiny stem here on which the flowers are attached to. Now, when these flowers fall, you don't necessarily need to cut this little stem. You will be left with something like this. It's pretty tiny, pretty small. It's just dried. You don't necessarily need to cut it. If you want to cut it, you can cut it. It's no problem. I usually don't because I'm lazy. But in any case, never cut the canes after they're them blooming, they support the orchid further on, they can also rebloom from the same old cane, so that's not a good idea. Uh, bottom line, with Dendrobium nobili orchids, you absolutely do not need to cut anything, uh, except for the cases in which their canes dry up, become mushy or stuff like that. Um, at this point, you can cut the flowers, uh, sorry, the pseudobulb, but other than that, do not cut anything, it really doesn't matter. They will not rebloom from the same stem again, they will rebloom in their appropriate season and with good care. The Oncidium orchids and their hybrids, the intergenerics, will also not produce multiple flower spikes if you cut the spike at a node, nor will they continue to grow from the tip in the vast majority of cases. So when this orchid is done blooming, all the flowers drop and uh, the flower spike actually will start to dry off. All you need to do is go with your scissors and cut the spike close to the base of the orchid as much as possible, simply for aesthetic reasons and also so you don't get tangled in the flower spike. So as low as you can go without actually cutting or down damaging the leaf is fine. So when this orchid is done blooming, I would simply cut it right here. You can apply this technique that I showed you with the Oncidiums to Brassia orchids, Miltonias and Miltoniopsis orchids, they're pretty much the same thing. When they're done blooming, just cut the flower spike from the base, you'll not have a rebloom from the same spike. 
Cattleya orchids again will not rebloom from the same flower spike unless it is that certain species which is a sequential bloomer but they're quite rare. Your usual hybrids, the ones you can find in grocery shops, the ones that do not have a name tag usually will not rebloom from the same flower spike. So when these beautiful flowers will fall you are safe to cut the flower spike just like I showed you with the dendrobiums as close to the base as possible simply for aesthetic reasons as well as for the orchid's own benefit so you don't bump into it. Similar to Calia orchids are the Encyclia orchids. They have pretty much the same tendency of blooming and when you see the flower spike is all dried up like this you are safe to cut it as close to the base as possible. Now there are some species of Encyclias like the Cothera which is a sequential bloomer. So before you do anything it's always a good idea to know what your orchid is. Look on the tag and then search on Google and see the specifics of your orchid. Uh, if you have an Encyclia which is annoyed, it's pretty much rare because Encyclias are not usually found in grocery shops. But if you do not have a tag, just leave the flowers be and if the flower spike starts to dry up just like this, you are safe to cut it. Again, similar to the Calia orchids and Encyclia orchids are the Brassavola orchids. Uh, the vast majority of them, if not all of them, will not produce sequential blooms. So when your blooms are done, simply cut the flower spike as close to the base as possible. The vast majority of Paphiopetalum hybrids you will find out there are not sequential bloomers. So when the flower is all done and dried up, you simply cut the flower spike as close to the crown of the orchid as possible for obvious reasons. Again, look at the label on your orchid if it does have a label because there are some Paphiopetalum species which do produce multiple flowers. In any case, if you are not sure what type of Paphiopetalum you have, just let it be and if you see that the flower spike dries up, uh, it's pretty obvious that it will not bloom again so you can cut it as close to the crown of the orchid as possible. Vanda orchids, although they might resemble Phalaenopsis orchids, uh, will not have sequential blooms. So after the flowers are done, you will notice that your flower spike will start to dry up. At this point, you are safe to cut it, and I have a cut flower spike here. Go as low as you can, close to the orchid's base. Um, this is safer for the orchid so you don't get tangled in the flower spike. Now this is the vast majority of Vandas. I'm not really sure if there are any species that are sequential bloomers. I've never heard of them, but there might be so look on your tag if you don't have a tag if it's just a hybrid just wait for the flowers to drop and if you notice that the flower spike will start to dry you're safe to cut it from the base most of the cases will not produce secondary spikes or will not continue blooming from the tip of the spike most cymbidium hybrids will not have sequential blooms either. So when your cymbidium orchid is done flowering, you are safe to cut the flower spike as close to the base of the orchid as possible. I will now mention again, look on your tag to see the specifics of your orchid. But if you don't have a tag, if you have a simple no ID hybrid, or should I say complex hybrid, you are safe to cut the flower spike from the base because it will not produce any more blooms from this flower spike. Okay, moving on to Psychopsis orchids. This is an orchid which is really known to be a sequential bloomer. So on your flower spike, you will have multiple buds created, which will bloom periodically. So cutting the flower spike of a Psychopsis is not a good idea if you want to have blooms. In this case, when your flower will dry and fall off, shortly after, a new bud will develop and you'll have yourself another pretty little flower. So for the vast majority of Psychopsis orchids, if not all of them, do not cut the flower spike unless it starts to dry up and uh, not produce flowers anymore. Uh, this is the instance in which you can cut it or if your orchid is super super sick. Other than that, leave the flower spike be because it can rebloom from the tip over and over again for quite a few years. Maxillaria orchids are not sequential bloomers, but their flower spikes are just so so tiny that actually you don't need to cut anything. If there's something sticking out which can put the life of the orchid in danger, you can cut it after the flower is done, but most of the times you don't need to cut anything from most maxillaria type orchids. Now there are some Phalaenopsis orchid species which produce sequential blooms and I will mention only a few here uh, and this is the Bellina, the Violacea and the Tetraspis orchid which I have here. Now this flower spike can produce blooms over and over again for multiple seasons so it's not a good idea to cut it because you will most probably have new blooms from the tip of the flower spike. 
In the case that the flower spike actually dries up, you can cut it towards the base and that's that. But if the flower spike is still green, it just does not have flowers anymore, do not cut it because you might have the nice surprise that in the next season you will have another set of blooms from the same flower spike. Also the orchid will produce multiple flower spikes so in time you can have quite a great show. Now this does not apply to all orchid species so check the label and um, then uh, try to search for your particular species and see its particularities. Um, the ones that I know are sequential bloomers as I said are the Bellina and Violacea and of course they're hybrids and the Tetraspis orchid. Now, Phalaenopsis orchids are the real problem here. They can actually produce side shoots from the same flower spike if you cut it at a node. They can also continue to bloom from the tip of the flower spike, so you will be left with a pretty huge, long, pretty bare flower spike. Now, I always considered cutting this type of orchid spike as something of a personal taste. I really do not like this display quite at all, so pretty soon I will cut the flower spike from the base and wait for another primary spike. But I do have a more extended discussion on the Phalaenopsis orchid, how to cut the flower spike exactly, depending on what you want, what to expect and so on, so I will not go through that again because it's a pretty long discussion, but if you visit the description of this video you will find the video that I'm referring to, so check it out and you'll learn more. Uh, about cutting flower spikes on a Phalaenopsis orchid. As a personal taste, I usually do not try to encourage any secondary spikes. They don't look so good. They really don't make my orchid look good. Kind of drains it of energy, so it's not my thing. It doesn't mean that it's wrong in any way, but I just don't like it. So I always cut flower spikes from the base. So whenever I'm tired of the blooms or when I don't have any more blooms on my orchid, I just cut the flower spike from the base. Alrighty, so this is about it on how to cut flower spikes on different orchids. As you noticed, not all orchids can produce multiple flower spikes if you cut the primary spike. This usually applies mainly to Phalaenopsis orchids, but as well you notice that some orchids can produce blooms from the same flower spikes over and over again, so it's not a good idea to cut it. If you are ever in doubt and you have a name tag, just google it and uh, most probably you will find discussions or you will find care sheets in which um, you will find out if your type of orchid is a sequential bloomer or not. If you don't have a name tag, just wait for the flower spike and see what it does. If it remains green, keep it a little bit more maybe, but if it dries up, you're pretty safe to cut it from the base. Alrighty, so if I forgot to mention anything or there are other orchids you would like to know how to cut the flower spike, just leave me a message and ask me and I'll try to give you my answer. Okay, so if you want to watch more videos from me about orchids, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can leave me any type of question uh, or suggestion for videos in the comment section below, but please make sure in your G plus settings that people outside your circles can reply to you, otherwise I cannot reply. And also if you want to um, get in touch with me or stay up to date with pictures and stuff like that, you can follow me on Twitter and you will find the link in the description. Um, I usually recommend all sorts of stuff, so <laughs> anyway, we can chat there. Alrighty, thank you guys for joining, I'll see you next time, bye!